Let's rewind to when we first got to Holly's. I think I tackled this about four or five months ago. I wanted to see what I could do without having to demo or reno the tile that was there since it was about halfway up the wall. I started with just paint friendly DIYs and a little bit of decor. So you're more than welcome to go and rewatch that. But I wanted to fast forward and see if I could actually demo this tile, add an accent wall and switch the entire mood by painting it black. On our last episode, I showcased like testing out a design because I wasn't 100% sure if I was going to love it. Well, uh, Holly ended up really loving it. So we're going to move forward and tackle the remainder of the bathroom, updating things here and there. Thanks to our partners today over at HelloFresh. You already know the deal. Lindsay's going to be right by my side, helping me trying to tackle this bathroom makeover over a weekend before I moved to Joshua Tree to house it for Mr. Mike of Modern Builds. A little quick life update here in the middle of the tutorial. We started by demoing the tile how I did previously, and then I ended up cracking open a part of the drywall just because the adhesive to the tile was too strong, just like what happened in the last episode. So I had to move forward and kind of adjust accordingly with the patching of the drywall drywall again to this side. So it's nice to know that literally where I patched the drywall and put the new drywall in on that side is exactly where this drywall that got repatched is. So there's like a couple of spaces that are super weak that we're going to repatch. Again, it's not ideal, but we got to do it. If you guys aren't familiar with patching drywall, it really isn't that intimidating. We went into depth on it in our last episode this week, so I'm just giving a little recap teaser. If you guys want a full in-depth of it, go ahead and watch that in its entirety, but I just basically copy and pasted, if you will, to this wall. It's actually in the same location, which I think is kind of unique as well. After I had that drywall all patched up, I moved forward with just using some spray wall texture, which I don't even know why I didn't record for you. I sprayed that on the wall, I've used it previously, and I went over it with an eggshell ultra pure black by Bear that's available at your local Home Depot. The reason that I decided to switch from the white to the black is because Holly has that accent wall that is on her hallway, which is her ceiling. She painted that strip black all the way down that back door and the bathroom door black. So I thought it'd be cool if it just continued into the bathroom since the side walls of the hallway are white. Since Holly was excited with the design that I was doing on the other half of the wall, I just copy and pasted it again onto this side of the wall with my brad nailer, some construction adhesive, these primed one by twos and cut them down to the size and angle to which I wanted it to be showing at the equal height of the other side. Cause again, you want it to continue kind of like the tile, but not be as ugly as the tile that was there before. I liked pine one by two, which I didn't mention in the last video. I 110% put some sealant on it to waterproof it and I cocked it as well to like uh, prevent that moisture from getting behind and popping it off. When we originally did this makeover, I hung the mirror vertically to, I, in my opinion, I thought it was gonna make the bathroom look taller, which would make it look bigger. But I think by flipping it horizontally and letting it kind of just take over that entire wall above the toilet and the sink, it makes it look deeper, which I think makes it even look larger than life. And this is a thrifted mirror that was $25, solid wood. This thing is ridiculously heavy and just like a really stunning piece in person. And we are able to bring in that natural wood tone that Holly is loving, just having as an accent throughout her home, we're pulling that in even more with that one by two beneath it and this natural wood frame mirror. Perfect. I decided to take out that vanity, which you saw, it just was a little bit dated for the space in that dark green, it really pulled everything down. So what I opted to do was pick up a vanity from my local Habitat for Humanity, paint it the jungle camouflage color that is actually the accent green in Holly's living room. It's a lighter green. It's a little bit more like just relaxed and calm since we're doing that black bathroom. I thought this would be a good option. I decided to do it in a flat sheen. I would recommend doing it in an eggshell or a semi-gloss, but again, Holly likes these flat sheens throughout her house. The flat though is a little bit more, um, just it's not easy to clean when it comes to water or water resistance. You wanna do something with a little bit of a gloss. 
The sink top came with the vanity. I did not purchase those separately, but I did purchase that black sink faucet ages ago when we first did the bathroom makeover and I wasn't familiar with plumbing, but I handled that like a G. I will be able to add to the meals that I get from HelloFresh because you know your girl doesn't really cook too much. Holly does, but I do not. That's where HelloFresh comes in handy for me for a while now. You know they've been a consistent sponsor here on the channel. No matter what is going on in the world, everyone's gotta eat. That's why HelloFresh is here to make eating better, easier. There's no grocery stores, no stressful meal planning, just everything you need to prepare wholesome, delicious meals all delivered directly to your door. Ask any of my friends, I am all about a good bite, and that is something that HelloFresh delivers every single time. They have more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you know you'll get something delicious. And you can even go online looking at the menus for the weeks ahead and choose your meals. You can even add extra dinners or lunches to your weekly order. You can throw an extra protein or add yummy meal compliments like HelloFresh's best-selling garlic bread. Right here, you see me making a lunch, actually. I just started implementing those into my HelloFresh order because I like a little small good bite in the middle of the day, not a big hearty meal. It's really cool how flexible HelloFresh is and really can fit your lifestyle. You can save time and stress effortlessly by having HelloFresh cut out that stressful meal planning and prepping, which is key for me. You can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or even 20 with their quick and easy options. The thing I'm the biggest fan of, honestly, is the fact I do not waste nearly as much as I did when I grocery shopped because I would just overbuy. HelloFresh can help you eat more sustainably. Their pre-portioned ingredients means there's less prep for you and less wasted food. A win-win in my situation. Set aside the fact that this is one of my favorite services, I love the fact that HelloFresh is committed to giving back. They donated over 2.5 million meals to charity in 2019, and this year is stepping up their food donations amid everything that is going on with the crisis. Here is a fun fact for you. If you're anything like me, sometimes you might throw away the recipe papers in a hurry, or maybe you want to recall a recipe. Well, you can actually go to HelloFresh's app and recall recipes very easily, which comes in handy when you fall in love with a recipe like this ricotta toast. If you guys are interested in checking out HelloFresh, you can go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 80 Mets to get $80 off across five boxes, including free shipping on your first box. I put it down in the description box and the pinned comment as well for easy access and reference. This light fixture was about $15, so I went ahead and swooped that up too while I was at the Habitat for Humanity, installed that a little bit higher and got some more bulbs just to brighten up the space. I made a poor design choice by trying to DIY a tray that attached to the side of the vanity and on top of the toilet. And when I ran into issues where I needed to get into that back of the toilet, I had to completely rip off that tray. So I opted to add two braces, shelf braces that were black with a black skinny, basically about six inches deep to make a shelf that is lifted above the toilet. So it's enough for me to be able to remove it and get in there if necessary to fix it. I did not make it clear, but what I did first was add those three full length one by twos that were holding up that one by two lip first. And then I came back in and cut down the smaller geometric pieces that needed to fit above the backsplash of the sink and along the sides where I didn't need to use that much material. I was trying to save where I could. A couple of concerns people have with geometric walls. Number one is that they are dust traps. I got that comment and I completely agree. I do think that if you just come in with a Swiffer pad by your hand or even like the Swiffer duster, it is a great way to remove it very easy without frustration. Number two, it doesn't necessarily need to be in a bathroom, but I thought it would be a cool way temporarily to update the space until she wants to redo it entirely with demoing out the tile of the shower. I think if she was not going to demo that and like expand her master bathroom this is where I would get crazy and like retile the shower and completely flip it but that's just not in the cards right now because she has future plans for her home expanding in different ways this is a side note for all my humans that know my love of robes this is my latest and greatest is an Amazon find and it is fabulous you do have to wash it once though because if you try to wear it new and sit on anything the fur gets all over so you just gotta wash it one time okay that's just a little random side note <laughs> 
While I was painting, actually, I had my friend Elena come over and she sewed together some DIY shower curtains. Now, I have done this before on my channel and it is a game changer for any bathroom in my opinion. What you wanna do is cut basically two different sets of shower curtains and sew them together and then cut them down to the height of your bathroom. That way it is covering floor to ceiling and it just makes your bathroom look instantly larger than life. So there you have it folks, with a couple of different tweaks, taking that tile out and replacing it with something else. We are now taking it from a blue bathroom when we first came in that didn't really have a theme to taking it to something more natural and light with the white and then keeping the tile and then coming in last minute and switching the tone completely and extending that black accent she has in her hallway and turning it into an entire chic guest bathroom moment in my opinion. Comes to storage solutions for a bathroom like this, I would would say obviously you want to get like a two-tiered stack for underneath the sink I'll link one down below for you as well as just shower caddies that are gonna be handy I did have that shelf above the window that I ended up putting eucalyptus in just for this after because I thought it was really gorgeous but before I had bins up there that had even more storage for her and then you can always add wall shelving if you have the space but I didn't want to overwhelm this area too much and kind of hide it versus have it on display like I did before I didn't like it like that I am very excited to say that we have now officially wrapped up 2020 content and I have one of the biggest announcements for 2021 that I am just besides myself to be able to dive into with you guys because you guys are the ones that made it possible. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I started uploading some stuff on YouTube stories, so be sure to check it over there. Love you guys. I'll see you soon for another DIY.